I am here to show you guys exactly how I make my seating chart mirrors in under two hours. In the past, I've seen people use grid lines that they make on the mirror, line them up as like little chalk lines, and then they write it out. I've seen people even pre-write the names and then rewrite over them. The method that I use is so easy to follow. It's seamless. It makes everything so perfectly aligned. So you don't have one table that's too, you know, too spaced out. And then one that's too close together, everything is completely even with this method. And I swear it saves time. Well, I used to be able to do four seating charts in one day. Back when I started and I was doing it, you know, the traditional way of guidelines and everything, it'd take me two days to do one seating chart. So I want to show you guys exactly how I do it everything that I use and follow along. First thing that I wanna say is I get most of my mirrors from consignment shops. I would go to antique shops and get old paintings and then go bring them to my glass guy and have him put new lightweight glass inside. Home Goods, Home Sense, like there's so many places and I also have a link on my website of the place where I get my mirrors from the most. So the first thing that I use that I clean all of my mirrors with is Spray Away. I like this so much better than Windex. For some reason, the smell of Windex just really bothers me. This is cheaper. You can get it at Home Depot um, for around two, three bucks if you buy it in bulk. The next thing that I use that isn't a personal fan favorite for everyone, but I use the Deco Color acrylic marker. The difference between acrylic paint and oil-based paint, well, oil based and water based paint, you're gonna need alcohol to remove it where with acrylic, you can use um, glass cleaner to remove it. I prefer this because with my mirrors, they're getting, they were used to be getting used so often that I would have to keep having to take them in, wash them, rewrite them so fast. It was easier for me to get this off. I also learned how to use a chisel tip. That's how I learned to write with. It's easier for me than a broad point marker and all of the Sharpies and everything like that, those brands that you're used to have all like the round broad tip um, where I prefer the chisel because it looks more like calligraphy ink as you're writing it. And the other thing that I use is tape. So for all of my mirrors, I don't make guidelines. I use, this is masking tape. Do not use painter's tape. I've tried that in the past. It leaves too much of a residue behind. And believe me, I have tried every single tape that's out there. Masking tape is the best. It sticks just enough, but it doesn't leave anything behind when you go to wipe it off. I prefer the 0 0.70 inch tape. You can see it's a little bit smaller than an inch. I will show you how I tape up my whole mirror, but the pros to using this versus a guideline is for not, for one, the whole mirror is taped up. So as you write a name, you're gonna rip the tape off. Your hand is covered while you're writing. So you can't get any of your hand smudge oils all over the mirror, everything's protected. And then another bonus with the tape is that when you're done, you're done. So there's no smudge marks left behind. There's no guidelines that you have to erase. When you're using the tape in the acrylic marker, I have had mirrors be outside stuck in the rain, like torrential downpour by accident. The ink does not come off. It smudges like a little bit, but like it doesn't drip down. It kind of just like wears off. And I'm talking like if it sits in the rain for three or four hours that it happened. Other than that, you can touch it. You can wipe over it. It won't come off. You can take a dry tissue wipe over if you get accidentally get a fingerprint on there. The only way to really remove it is to soak it with the Windex or spray away and then wipe it away. So um, if anybody's questioned, you know, switching up their inks, if you like using oil, um, I know it dries really fast. It's a little bit easier to remove a mistake with acrylic ink because that way you, before it dries, you can wipe it away. Personal preference, but I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I make my mirrors using the tape method. But on the computer, I import all of the names into Excel. And then I go through and I organize everything into three columns. I find with most of my mirrors, three or four, four columns, depending on how many tables and how many names there are. I've used these mirrors for 10 plus years. So I exactly, I can already see it. I know how many are gonna fit and how many columns it's gonna need. The good thing with, with the tape is that you can kind of measure out exactly 0 0.70. You can do the length of your mirror, measure, measure the whole length divide it by 0 0.70, then you know exactly how many lines you can fit on there. So going into it, I've already organized all my names into three columns. I have table one, two, three, and then I go down. I have room for the header. I have labeled how many lines are gonna be under each header, and then a one space in between. So when I'm going on there, I already know I've totaled it all up. My longest column, 64. So I need to do three columns and 64 lines. Now, I've been doing this for a long time. Like I said, I eyeball a lot. 
If you wanna be very precise, you would just need to get your ruler out, but I'm gonna go through and show you exactly how I do it step by step. So I tape each side. This is a beveled edge here. So I already know I can't write on that edge. It's just gonna look a little funny. And then I'm gonna need three columns. I find that this gives the perfect amount of space in between each column so that I don't have one main touching another. First line. So I know that I need to leave, I would say that much space for the header. They want to be our guests at the top. Now, I'm, I, I, obviously I'm eyeballing to see if that's level, but I will take a ruler and check just in case. And that's perfectly level, which is rare. Um, so from here, that's my, that's gonna be table one, two, three across there. And then I go through and I tape up the rest of the mirror. So I need to put 64 lines of tape on here. And a lot of people will say, oh my God, you must use so much tape. I really do. I, whenever I'm going through um, and buying supplies for the month, I will say I will average one roll of tape and one marker for each wedding to do just the seating chart. And then that way it helps me price out too, not only my time, but the materials needed for each project when you're working that into your pricing. With this, I just, I find it so much easier. It takes me about 10 minutes to tape up the mirror. A lot of people like to do them ahead of time. They'll have this done, you know, weeks before. Where my mirrors that were rented so fast and so often, I had them coming back on, you know, a Monday morning and then they were getting picked up on a Tuesday night or a Wednesday morning. So I knew in my mind I had to work fast in order to get it done. So, and a lot of times I just didn't have time to pre-tape them because they were in use for the weekend. So this person has 16 tables, which, isn't the biggest, I would say it's like a medium sized wedding for me, but she has about 10 to 12 people at each table, which is a little bit larger than my average, you know, six to eight people at a table. So I knew that I needed to work with a taller leaning length mirror rather than one that goes on an easel, um, just to ensure that it will fit. And this really matches the, the venue and the space that it's going in. The next thing that I do is I go through and I will mark off on the tape with a dark marker so that you guys can see. I will label one, two, three o'clock across and then I will mark off exactly how many spots I need to save to be writing on the names in that column. Now, in my mind, I can already visualize and kind of perfectly center my text as I'm writing it. If that's not easy for you to do or you prefer a left or right alignment, I suggest doing so and printing that out just so it's easy to visualize and see as you're writing it. But I will show you um, exactly how I start to mark up the mirror. So I do column one, two, and three. Table one has seven people. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then uh, space. This is also a great way for as you're writing, if you get distracted or you forget and see a name, because naturally that happens, it's human error. Um, you can kind of reference back and be like, huh, I thought I was done, but it still says that I have a spot here. Go back to your list and you can see, oh, I forgot Mr. Cooper. Go back and add him. So I have everything marked up. I know exactly how many lines are under each table and then a space in between for each one. So I am going to start with the header. Another thing that I wanna add about the seating charts is that everybody will ask, how do I organize the names? It's totally up to you. I prefer alphabetical order because it's easier as a guest to find your name, but visually I like the look of it by table. This guest here has Mr. Um, and Mrs. in front of each name. I always suggest if, if it's not that formal to kind of drop the Mr. and Mrs. It just takes up too much space, anything I like to group couples together. So you wanna put Nancy and Edward together, Nancy and Edward Smith, rather than each individual person. That helps to save on lines. Another helpful tip is in between um, under each table. So within table one, alphabetize it by last name. It's just a little bit easier for the guests to find their name that way. Most of the time though, I find once one person goes up to the seating chart, they look for their name. They go, oh, I'm sitting at table one. They like to see who they're sitting with because guests are nosy. And then they'll go back during cocktail hour. Hey Susan, I'm sitting with you. We're at table one. That's one less person running up to that seating chart to see where they're sitting. I know most venues get afraid of that bottleneck situation where everybody leaves the, the ceremony, goes into cocktail hour and goes, where do I sit? I mean, obviously everybody that's there has a seat, but they just, it's their one thing that they have to figure out. So they go and 
rush to the seating chart. So um, as, as neat and organized as you can keep them, it's helpful on the venue side and as a guest, it's helpful to just not have any confusion. So what I do is I fold my names up. This is column one right here. I will tape this next to the area that I'm writing because I find that the closer that the names are to the area that I'm writing on, the easier it is for me to write faster and avoid making mistakes. Now, from this stage on, I can already tell you that this column here will probably take me about 20 minutes. This will probably take me 20 and 20 for each one. So I know that the writing section of this is gonna take me about an hour, give or take how many times I get distracted. I have two kids, two dogs, and a house that's full of people coming in and out. So there's always a distraction that's gonna happen. But let's see how close to the time we can get. So time stamp here, 4.05. Taking off my first layer, because that's the header. I like to do my headers in script and then my uh, names all in capital uppercase. It's just so much easier for the guests to find their name. Okay, so I've written all the first names in table one. I ripped off my space. Now I'm ripping off four. I know that's my header. I'm gonna rip that on. And then I'm gonna take my names and I'm gonna move it down because I want this section to be lined up with what I am writing from. All 15 tables have been lettered, and it is 5.01. So it took me exactly an hour to letter this whole thing, and using the tape method, there's no fingerprints on this whole thing. Even if so, I can still wipe over it and get them off with the dry tissue, because like I said, the acrylic paint, it dries so smooth and it stays on there so good. The process is made to cut down your time, not saying that you are going to write as fast as I am. I've been doing this for about 10 years. It comes easily for me. I've been doing it every day. It was, I did weddings primarily for a good chunk of that time. Over time, it's gotten easier. It's becoming like second nature. I wouldn't charge less because it takes me less time. I would say that's a, a learned skill that deserves conversation and it's definitely a learned talent. But I don't want you to get discouraged if it doesn't take you an hour. I'm not saying that this, mes that this method is going to make you do your seating charts in an hour. It's just going to cut down on prep time and speed up efficiency. Another great thing that I love about this method that I've come up with is if you're not a seasoned calligrapher, even if you don't know calligraphy at all, this is still something that you can learn to do on your own. So if you wanted to DIY your own wedding and you have neat handwriting, all you would have to do is follow the steps here. If you're good with Excel, I'm personally not. I have Mackenzie, my assistant, do all of the back end of the Excel organization because I'm terrible with computers. So as long as you can figure out how to organize it on your mirror and space it out properly and use the tape method to write it out if you have neat handwriting, I'm sure this is something that you could easily do on your own. Or if you're not, you could find a calligrapher to do it for you because that's also great too, less stress. So I'll show you up close and personal of what it looks like and tell me if you guys liked this method and if you use it yourselves. As you can see, it's all neat. And then I add their names at the bottom to take up that empty space, all nice and neat in a row. And look, won't come off. If you guys are new to the channel, um, I know it's been a while since I last posted, but I just wanna give you a quick tour around and have you see what it looks like. So this is my garage and this is attached to our house. So in there's my house. This is the green wall. Here's the seating chart that I just made. And here are my shelves stocked with product. And this is all listed on my website. You can buy everything online. Most of it can be personalized. We've got the cutting boards. My friend Elise makes these beautiful earrings. 
got the mugs, some apparel. This is my wedding dress. So this is all the new merch that just came in. And this is leftovers from the DIY party that I had last night. So I teach them here at the studio and give everybody the supplies on how to make these little wood signs for their home. And then back here is storage in my Glowforge. And here's my brick wall in my egg chair, sticker station. So you can get a tumbler and customize your tumblers or iPads, MacBooks, whatever you like. This is my garage studio. This is where we hang out. This is where I work from. And this is truly my happy place. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you like this video. I hope you like all the information that I shared with you of the methods and tips and tricks that I've learned over the years. If you wanna see more, let me know comment and like the video, share it on your page, um, share it with your friends. And if there's anything that I missed, any key details uh, that I need to go over again, or maybe in more detail, um, let me know in the comments and I will do my best to get back to you. And if not, I'll just make another video explaining a little bit more and sharing more tricks that I've learned along all these years of lettering. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.